Hello and welcome to this video on calculating changes in internal energy using heat capacity and equations of state. At the end of this video you'll be able to explain what path is used to calculate changes in internal energy and then calculate the internal energy change using an ideal gas heat capacity and an equation of state. So in the previous video we looked at how uh, we can or we derived an equation for the change in uh, internal energy using an equation of state. So we've got for our change in U uh, our heat capacity turns times by dt and then we've got this term over here which is made up of pressure and partial differentials of the pressure. So we can use an equation of state in here. Now because we've got a temperature term and then a, a volume term over here, we can do our change in steps. So just like we did with our function z, we can do our change in steps so we can if we've got u at t1 v1 we can do a step at constant v i.e. the temperature changes and then we can do a step at constant temperature where just the volume changes and so when we do that we've got step one okay which is just the volume change we are the temperature change which is integrated from t1 to t2 and then we've got step two which is integrated from V2 to V1. So these terms are always integrated. Okay, so if you're, if you're doing a change and you've got a function, then you're always integrating things. Now the issue with this is that we need a, we need to know what the heat capacity is. Now we don't tend to know what the heat capacity is just at any arbitrary volume. We tend to only uh, know this um, at ideal gas conditions. Okay, so because that's where things are tabulated at. So what we need is we need to construct a path where we can use the CV values that we have, i.e. at ideal gas conditions. To do that then, it's easier if we take a three-step path. So we make one constant temperature step to some large volume, okay, so just something called V big here. If we're at a big volume, then we're at ideal gas conditions, and so we can change temperature and we can integrate that temperature using the ideal gas heat capacity. And then our third step is going back from ideal conditions to the real conditions that we're interested in. So we end up with a three-step process. Constant temperature, change in volume step. Constant volume, change in temperature step. And then constant temperature, change in volume step. So this three-step path we're going to use again and again. So because we tend to have data at these ideal gas conditions, and then the equation of state can help us calculate what's going on in these other two steps. And so we've already looked at something that's analogous to this, and, and you may have recognized already that when we're doing this step here, really what it is is going from a real gas to an ideal gas and then this step over here is an ideal gas going to a real gas and so the difference between real gas properties and ideal gas properties are the departure functions okay so so those steps there this one the first step is the negative of a departure function real to ideal but the final step is equal to the departure function, going from ideal to real. And so our middle step here is the same. So if we wanted to, we could do these calculations with departure function charts. But as we've discussed, 
uh, they've really got a limited usability, particularly if you're going to be doing optimization studies. So this has been a lot of different equations. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do an example where we use an equation of state to calculate the change in internal energy. And so the example that we're looking at here is the change in internal energy for uh, butane as we compress it from 350 Kelvin and 0.4 megapascals to 390 Kelvin and 2 megapascals. And so we want to calculate what the, the delta U is using the van der Waals equation of state. Now to do all this we're going to need a whole range of data and so so we need the heat capacity okay so that's the first thing and so for this example I'm just going to use a, a constant heat capacity I need my equation of state I've got that here now my equation of state is going to have constants in it and so to calculate those constants I need my critical data so both my my critical temperature and my critical pressure and then once I've got those things then I can substitute them in to calculate my parameters for my equation of state in this case a the attractive parameter and b the repulsive parameter and so it's very important to make sure you get your units right as you can imagine uh, if you get those units wrong and you're out by a factor of a thousand that's going to affect the equation of state by a lot now I'm going to use the same path that I just was just talking about so up to ideal gas conditions change in temperature and then back to real gas conditions again so using this three-step path now I'm going to use if I'm going to do this path I have to define what my V big is and so over here I've said it's a thousand I'm actually going to change that and I'm just going to make that equal to infinity and you'll see why that's a, a good idea in a minute so what I've started with here is just the, the definition of a change in U and then I've introduced the path that I'm going to use okay so so my change in U is going to be equal to step 1 plus step 2 plus step 3 now to do step one, which is a volume change, sorry, and I just see I made a mistake uh, here, get rid of that. And of course this is with respect to volume. So the first thing I need is my dP to T. So uh, dP to T at fixed volume is equal to R on uh, V minus B. And so now if I substitute this back up into my equation above together with my uh, equation of state as well then what I get is uh, delta 1 u is equal to the integral from uh, my starting point to infinity so now if I uh, substitute in and take those away then uh, what I get is so it's integral and this term up here times by T that's uh, actually a plus uh, there so simplify that out delta 1 u is equal to oops. okay so so now I've got a value for my delta 1 u knowing that delta 2 u is just the reverse so I can say my uh, delta 2u is equal to so I'm going from infinite volume 
to volume 2 and so that's the integral of a on v squared again and so that's equal to negative a on v2 and for the second delta u we can simply calculate that as the integral of the heat capacity because it's a fixed heat capacity in this case it's, it's essentially just cv delta t and so we can get a value for that now we need to calculate delta 1u and delta 3u the reason I wasn't able to do that straight away is because I don't actually know what the volumes are so my next step is to solve for uh, my v1 at t1 and p1 and also solve for v2 at t2 and p2 now we remember that for essentially all equations of state we can't just solve these things analytically so I'm going to solve this offline in MATLAB so I already know my constants uh, for my equation of state a and b I know what t1 and p1 are so I substitute all this into MATLAB and I get my value for volume and then my value for v2 okay so my v1 is much greater than v2 I'm just going to go back and check that that seems right okay so so I'm increasing pressure so that seems to be uh, okay now that I've got those things I can substitute that back into my equations for uh, for delta 1u and delta 2u and so what I get is uh, delta 1u plus delta 2u so just substituting back into the equations here okay so so this equation here and and this equation here so when I substitute that back in what I get is a value of uh, negative 932 joules per mole and my uh, my overall delta U then becomes my previous value up here, so 4680 minus 932. Oops, sorry, that should be a 2 mole. Okay, so and so this seems like a reasonable number. My heating has had the biggest effect, but the main thing I can check is this one here so because we're increasing the pressure by a lot okay so we're, we're going from 0.5 megapascals 0.4 megapascals to 2 megapascals um, we're compressing it we're getting much closer together I expect the molecular interactions to be greater and so given that I expect that my change in enthalpy due to the change in volume should be a negative value and that's what I get okay obviously heating it from t1 to t2 I'm expecting a positive value up here which I get so all these numbers seem to make sense now if I compare this so so my answer again was uh, three four five five now if I compare that to what NIST says so NIST says that okay my actual change in internal energy from uh, condition 1 to condition 2 is 2200 joules per mole then I've obviously done something wrong well not quite what is wrong is that the equation of state is at fault so it's a very simple equation of state it's a reasonable attempt for 1873 by van der Waals but it does a poor job of approximating this data so beware always use the equation of state that gives you the accuracy that you're after so if I was seriously interested in this system I'd be using something else besides the van der Waals equation of state so to recap on what we've done to calculate delta U using an equation of state and the heat capacity you need a three-step path if you're going to do it in two steps you need to be very careful because you may be doing your steps in a region that 
the ideal gas heat capacity doesn't apply. So three steps is always recommended. Okay, thank you for your time.